Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone, or good evening. My name is Jason Christian. I'm speaking to you from Molipopuri, from food court right now, because uh, <laughs> the, the office that I rented is closed for Saturday. So here I am. So sorry for uh, noises. So today we are going to, uh, I'm going to live demo. Uh, how to create a simple game in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So basically, it runs on your browser. So without any further ado, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see it? Uh, yep. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Okay. So a lot of you guys who used Chrome, uh, if your internet gets disconnected, uh, you might have known this game. So if your internet got disconnected, you are presented with a dinosaur right? and if you, if you press that space or you press your mouse, uh, you can play a game, a dinosaur game. So today we are going to create a clone of that. So I call it GDSE Cat, cat Game and I believe this is the best GDSE Cat Game type game out there. So this is it. So as you can see, there's a cat here, and you jump over the rocks. That, that, that's pretty much the game. And if you crash, the cat disappears and came over. And you can see your score here, 008. So I'm, today, I'm going to show you guys how to make this kind of game in HTML and how to deploy it to Firebase so every one of your friends can play it on their browsers. So let's uh, close my Discord first and then, yeah, let's get right onto it. So uh, let me copy the repository to the to this project. So this is the link and here, you should be able to see before and after Folder. After is the project once we have finished, and before is the template. So we are going to work with the template. So uh, on the left here, I open my VS Code, and you guys can see I opened the before file. So here we have five files. So one of them is the cat picture, the other is the floor picture, and the other is the rock picture. So let me open this. Real quick, open with the gallery because it's black. Okay, so this is the cat. It is a GIF, so it can move. And the next one is the floor. The floor is very short, so we are going to tile this. So what is tiling? Tiling is placing it uh, like patterns in the browser. And the next one is the rock. I made this project in a fit of panic and stress yesterday in four hours. So <laughs> yeah, okay. So let's continue. And the rest of the files, we have index.html, we have index.js and index.css. So here I have filled out some codes. This is called boilerplate. So what is a boilerplate? Boilerplate is basically like a template code that it's not really a template, but, but it's really, a code that you start with so you don't really have to start with scratch so yeah we have three of them and i'm going to explain them uh, moving forward so if i open index.html on my browser this should appear a green a green and empty browser so what we're going to do is we are going to fill this with our game so if we compare this to the finished product, we can have we have a little box here. The box is where we have the game, and then we have some text. So let's add the text and boxes. So let's go back here. And if you guys are interested, just download the code and you can follow along, or you can just watch me on how to do it. So here, uh, let's get into the HTML. We have title. We have the CSS file and then we have the JS file. We have to place the JS file at the end because we want the JS file to be loaded last so we can run the code last. So that's the rationale why I put it on the, on the last line. So on the first line of the body here, I'm going to create a div. 
So in this diff, we are going to place our game title and we are going to place our game. And so I'm going to uh, give this a class. So if you go, to, if you guys don't know what a class is, a class is basically you can access your CSS from here. So I'm going to access the middle box class, which is here. This is a flex container. So basically what this does is place everything in the center. So I'm going to put middle box here and I'm going to close the diff, okay? And if I type anything here and then I type save and the browser here automatically updates and we see a text here. So we can put the title here. So to put the title, we are going to create a new H1 tag. And here we are going to write GDSC dash cat game ever yet. Okay, so when I type save, it should appear here. So it's already releasing mode. The next box that we are going to create is the game box. So we are going to create the box here in the light green. And I'm going to create a div. And again here, I'm going to create an ID. So ID is a unique identifier to identify this tag. And the ID that I'm going to create is called game. And okay, that should be it. And nothing appeared yet. That's because we have to create a CSS for this. So I'm going to go to index.css. I'm going to create a hashtag game. So here I'm going to create the CSS uh, tag for this. So I'm going to create the actual game stage here. So here I'm going to put the background color and the background color I'm going to choose is light green. So this is E zero FFBD. I'm cheating off uh, my phone right now. So that should be fine. And then the next one that I'm going to create is I'm going to set this width to 100 VW. This means that I want the width of the box to be equal to the width of the browser. So 100 view width. So that should be it. And then I'm going to set the height to let's say 360 pixels. If you click save, then there you go. The box appears here. It's that simple. So this is the bare minimum of game. And so in this diff, we are going to place our cat, our floor, and everything that we need. So the next one that I'm going to create is the grass. So let's create a new diff again here. Uh, really like diff as you can see and we don't need to close it we need it to be id equals game grass so you know what's next we are going to create the grass and here i'm going to create the grass again game grass and i'm going to set a background so the background should be the file here for the png so url for png Let's try to press, uh, let's start to save. Oh, it doesn't appear yet. That's because we haven't set the width and the height. So for the width, I'm going to set 120 VW, so 120% of the browser window. Why? I'll tell you later. So the height, I'm going to set this equals to the file height. So the file height is 32 pixels. And if I click save, okay. It appears, but uh, everything is messed up because we have these ugly scroll bars. So this ugly scroll bars can be deleted by adding a new class in the game. So I'm going to type overflow hidden. And if I type save, hey, it's gone and everything is fine. But you can see the floor is up here and we don't want it to be up there. We want it to be down there. And so I'm going to position the grass as absolute. What does absolute do? Absolute just means that uh, we tell the browser that we want to place it anywhere in the box. So if I 
quick save. Uh, it is still like this, but that's fine because we want to place it now. So we want to place it bottom. Let's say we want to place it 5% from the bottom. If I click enter. Oh, now it's all messed up. But that's because we haven't set up another parameter in King. And then that parameter in the game is position relative. So relative is anything that we place in game stays in game. So this crest, as you can see here, it goes outside of the game tag. We don't want it to be outside. We want it to be in. So that's why we place relative. So when we save, it got fixed and everything is pretty. So we can see the floor is doubled here. Uh, we don't want it to be doubled. So in the background, we can add something new. We call repeat x. So what is repeat x? Repeat x is basically we tell the browser that we want the tile to repeat in the horizontal directions only. So save. And OK, uh, looking very similar. OK, so next, uh, we can add the cat. So game cat. So game cat. Again, uh, I'm going to be fast because we are uh, <laughs> running out of time. Game cat position absolute again because we want to place it anywhere. We want to set the content. Content is URL. Uh, we want to upload the cat. So cat get view. And we want to place it bottom uh, 10%. So you guys can play with the numbers, see where you like the cat to be. Uh, I already made this yesterday, so I know everything. And we set it left, 64 pixels. And type enter. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. We haven't added the cat diff yet. So let me add it. Diff. Uh, ID. Again, cat. Okay, it's there. The cat is there. Really nice. So that's for the cat. And next, we want to add the rock. So game rock. I dot instead of a hashtag. That's because we are going to have rock in our game. So if we use hashtag, this is for one button the rock. So that's why we use dot. So let's do it again, position absolute. And then content, URL rock.png, and then bottom 8%. So we place it there. And that's it for the rock. So uh, let's try spawning in the rock. So let's set it to like, for example, 300 pixels. We're going to index and we add the rock. Diff class game rock. Let me click save. It doesn't appear. Uh, uh, wait. I think something is wrong, but that's fine. Oh, okay, the rock is there. Apparently you have to close the HTML tags. Don't leave them open, so keep it like this. Okay, uh, and uh, that's, we are sure the rock is there, but we don't want the rock to immediately spawn, right? So we should delete the rock and leave it for later. And I think we should set any missions now. So we want the cat to jump, right? And we need the floor to move. So let's create the floor first. So we are going to create something called move left. And here we are going to create an animation. So the animation is called move left. It should be completed in 0 0.5 seconds and it's linear and infinite. So linear here is the interpolation. Basically, we want it to be straight and it doesn't speed up or slow down. And infinite here means that it repeats infinitely. And now we are going to create the actual animation. So 
to create an animation, we type keyframes and then we type move left, the, the name of our animation. And we are going to type from left zero pixels to left minus means that you want floor to move from left zero pixels to left minus 25 six pixels in 0 0.5 seconds so to test this uh, we should add this tag to the floor so this is the floor right the grass so i'm going to type class and game uh it's called move left okay move left and if i click save hey it moves so you can see on the right here it's kind of choppy that's because uh the width is basically too small so we need to make it bigger so we should make the ingress width to be 150 for example and you can see that it's fixed and that's it for the cut and the grass so next i'm going to copy this but i'm going to make this for the rock so i'm going to name this move rock and because the rock moves farther away, it has to move from one side of the browser to the other side. I'm going to make this right. Why right? Because the rock starts on the right. And I'm going to modify the two here to be 5120. Why 5120? Because it's a large number. So the rock should have time to be able to travel from one end to the browser or to the end. And let's make move rock here too. Oh no, we don't need it. We we can automatically insert it into game rock. So emission move rock 10 seconds and linear. And I if the rock here is in the rock place, if class game rock, and then close this. If we save, the rock should appear on the right, and then it will move and hit the cap. So, ready? Save. Of course, it doesn't work. Okay, hey, <laughs> that's troubleshoot why it, why it doesn't work. Why it doesn't work. Oh, that's because we set it left. We should delete it. So let me confirm that everything is right. And I think that's right. Let's save. Okay. Okay. Wait. It doesn't work. So there is obviously something wrong. Uh, let me try to comment this. Uh, and okay. So suddenly it works. I think that's because the refresh browser has issues. So if you keep refreshing the browser, the rock should appear and it is gone. And that's basically the basics to our rock. So I think that's everything for the cat, the rock and the floor. So next let's create the actual code for the game. So we are going to move on to JavaScript. And before we create, create the code, we should add a scoreboard here. So I'm going to create an H2 here, heading two. So I'm going to type score, and then it should appear there. Then here, I'm going to create a span. What is a span? So a span is an element that you can put in the text, and everything you type in the span will appear next to the text. So that's cool. Uh, but why should we use a span? Why can't we just use this? That's because in the span, we can we can access it from code and edit the span directly instead of editing the score text itself. So I'm going to give this an ID, and the ID is the score span. Okay, that's it. And so we can type the score here. 
Okay, that should be it. And I think that's for CSS and HTML. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, before we move on, we should delete the floor, move left, because we don't want it to move yet. We want it to move once the game starts. And I'm going to make the cat disappear. So how to make it disappear? I'm going to add a class called clone and it disappears. And I'm also going to delete the rock. And everything is the same like that. So we are going to add, uh, we are going to move the grass programmatically to the JavaScript. So let's do that now. So here, uh, this is a boilerplate for the JavaScript that I've made. And so this is everything that we need now. We have score, we have started, ended, is jumping. So all the variables here uh, tells the state of the game. So have the game started yet? Have the game ended yet? Is the cat jumping or not? So this will help us uh, do checking. And the checking is essential. So we can do things more easily. So here at the bottom, we have game start, game end, update score, spawn drop, cat jump. It's self-explanatory in the title. And we have a utility function here called random range. This is basically a function so that you can generate a random number. Uh, the number minimum is in the is in the parameter and max is in the parameter too. It's really simple. And here we have the event listeners. What is this? This is basically will catch if you click on the game or you press a key on your keyboard. So in this case, uh, document at event listener key down and event key equals space. So this is basically will detect your space bar. So here I'm going to create the code. So if the game has not started, then we start the game. Game start. So if we click space in the browser and the game hasn't started yet, we will start the game. Else if the game has started, then we will make the cat jump. That's it. And I'll copy this real quick and place it here too, because we don't want it to be space only. Uh, let's think about the mobile users, guys. They don't have space bars, so, but they can touch the div. So that's what we are going to do. Hello. Okay, so, <laughs> Do you, see, do you guys see the kit? There's like a kit beside me. Okay. Uh, next is, uh, okay, so we can do it with mouse too. So yeah, that's that. So let's start making the game start. And yeah, let's make that. So in the game start, we are going to step start it to be true. Uh, this is so that uh, when we run game start, the game will be started. And if we click space again, or we click the browser, we will go to cat jump instead of game start. So that's that. And in the game start, we are going to update our score. So let's open the Google Dinosaur game real quick. So let's search this, go to here. And if we press space, a score will appear on the top right and it increases every several seconds. So we are going to replicate the same as that. So here I'm going to call a function called set interval. This is already in JavaScript. So that's that. Set the set interval function is an interesting one because it allows you to execute a piece of code that you enter in, and then it will execute that piece of code every several seconds, every time you want it to be. So I'm going to make a function here. So this is called an arrow function. So basically, we are passing in 
a function into this function. It sounds really funny, but that's how it works. So here we can, so basically anything that I, I put here, it will be run every second that I want it to be. So how many seconds do I want it to be uh, repeated? I'm going to put it here, 100. So this code will run every 100 milliseconds. So that's how it works. What are we going to put here? I'm going to put score plus equals one. So every 100 milliseconds, the score will update by one and we are going to update our score. So let's do update score. So in update score, we are going to modify the HTML file here. So you can see that we have created this span. So this is where the span will come in. So let's remember the name, ID, score span. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to type document dot get element by ID, and I'm going to paste it here. So this, what this will do is this will convert this tag, this HTML tag into a variable that we can use. So let's store it here, fonts, score, diff equals that, and then semicolon, and then we can do anything we want here. So I'm going to uh, modify this path. So I'm going to score diff dot inner text. So inner text is the text that is contained inside the div. So if I type blah, blah, blah here, then blah, blah, blah will be the inner text. So we are going to modify that into the current score. Then let's click save. And we haven't actually run the code yet. We don't know if it works or not. So let's go to the browser and press space. It doesn't work. Yeah, let's see if it if there's any error. Okay, we have an error. Game dev is not defined. That's because I did something wrong here. So game dev, we haven't actually created the variable game dev. So let's create that real quick. So let's go to the top here, fonts, game dev. And in the game dev, I'm going to repeat here the document, the element by ID. And here, I'm going to put the game box. So the game box here is game. So game. So what this does is it will add a listener to the game tag here. So if we click it, mouse down, it will do the same script. So if we press here, the game will start. You can see the score is going up now. So we know that the score works. So uh, the scoring works, but we are going to place this set interval function into a variable, the return value of it at least. Uh, we are going to put it in the score updater function because in the game and function, we want to cancel this function from running because currently everything that it is in here, it is running every 100 milliseconds. And if the game ends, we have to stop it somehow, right? So to stop it, we have to put it here in the variable. And in the game end, I'm going to clear it. I'm going to stop it by tapping clear interval score updater. Boom, and that's it. But we haven't called the game end yet. So let's get back to that. Okay, the, score, the scoring works. Now let's get into moving the cat and moving the grass. So here, I'm going to create a reference to the cat. So I'm going to create const cat div equals document get element by ID. And the ID of the cat is game cat. So game cat. I'm going to do the same to the grass. So I'm going to type floor diff. And the floor diff will be 
game grass. Okay. So in the code, let's move it. So cut this. So remember when in the grass, we add a new class here and we are, we can type move left, move left, and the grass will move. So we are going to do that programmatically, how? So this is what we do. So for div dot class list. So class is the HTML class. And go, you're going to add move left. So if I save and I press space here, the ground will move and the score will start. So I'm going to do the same with the cat because the cat is gone, right? We are going to we are going to remove this tag. So cat div dot class list dot dot remove. Yeah, remove and move and gone. So let's run it again and the cat is there. But the cat can't jump yet. So we are going to do that next. So in cat jump. So cat jump will be called if we press enter again, right? Uh, space. So let's do this next. So in cat jump, uh, let me see where, where cat jump is. Okay. So we have a helper function, helper variable is jumping here. So we are going to use is jumping to keep track of everything. So if the cat is not jumping, then we make the come we make the cat jump. So is jumping equals true. And then in the cat diff, we are going to add into the class list. We are going to add the the animation of the cat jumping. Oh, we haven't actually made it. So let's make cat jump. So I'm going to place it here, cat jump. And let's see where it is. Hmm. Cat jump. So animation, cat jump, 0 0.8 seconds is one. So here I press, I entered linear, but here I enter is. That's because we want the cat jumping to be smooth and it is repeated only one time. So let's create the keyframes for cat jump. Cat jump. Zero uh, percent. So this is a little bit unique because we want we want the cat to go from down, up, and then down again. So we have three states. The first one is 0%, the second one is 50%, and the last one is 100%. The percent represents the progression of the animation. So 0%, we want the cat to be in the ground. And then 50%, we want the cat to be in the air. So let's translate the cat. Translate means move in plain English. And the last one, 100%, we are going to place the cat back on the ground. So let's go back to the script. We are going to add cat jumps to the class list. So when we press enter and then we press space again, the cat jumps. But if I press space again, doesn't work. That's because we haven't we haven't removed the cat jump. So when we add cat jump again, it'll just not work. So we have to remove cat jump. Uh, we have to remove cat jump after the cat has jumped, and we have to set this to false too. So how do we do that? We have another JavaScript function to do that, and that's called set timeout. So set timeout is really similar to set, inter uh, set interval, except that set timeout only does it once and it will add a delay. 
So how much the delay that we want? So we set the animation here. I kept jumping to be 0 0.8 seconds, right? So we are going to type 800 milliseconds here. So we sync with the, the time of the cat jumping. And in the script here, that is that will be run after 800 milliseconds of the cat first jump, we are going to remove cat jump. So remove. And then we set the is jumping turbo to be false. So save, then space, and then the cat is able to jump and it's able to stop. So that's that for the cat. Uh, hey, Jason, uh, I think uh -huh. you can continue the rest later. Maybe uh, you can just share the GitHub, like show the GitHub repository if you want, because uh -huh. we haven't a lot of time left. So you can do okay, it if you uh, want. I guess we can do that. Uh, I'll make a recording and I'll place it in the GitHub repository, I guess. So I'm really sorry. Uh, and the time has passed 30 minutes, so I will make a video to make it up. So that's fine. So yeah, I will place it. I will place the video in the GitHub repository so you guys can update it. It should be up by tomorrow night. So yeah, that's that. Uh, in the video, I will talk about deploying the application to Firebase hosting and we will be finishing the actual cat game. So that's it for me. Uh, really sorry. Thank you, guys. Okay. So now that we have the cat game and we have the floor moving and we have the cat jumping when we press space or click on the on the canvas. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is to actually create the rocks. So rocks are the obstacles to the game and if the cat hits them, uh, it will show a game over and the score will stop. So let's actually spawn the rocks. So here we have the spawn rock function, which is empty. So we are going to fill this. So after the game starts, we should call the spawn rock function. So rocks will start spawning. So let's do spawn rock. So in spawn rock, what you want to do is to actually create new HTML, new divs that is with the ID of class equals to game dot rock that we have created in index dot CSS. So we have game rock here and we are going to add that here programmatically. We can do that in JavaScript. So what we're going to do here is we need to know whether the game has stopped or not. So we have a helper variable here, which which says let ended false. So the game has not ended yet. So we want to do a quick if statement here. So if the game is not ended, we should spawn the rock. So let's spawn the rock. So let's create a new variable called rock. And here we are going to create a new element, a new HTML element that with the tag div. So by doing this, I'm basically creating a new div like this. And here, after creating the div, we need to actually uh, insert the class into this div, the class which is game rock, and we are going to insert this div into the HTML. So let's do that real quick. So adding a class is simple. We know that already. So just do rock class list and add game rock. The next is we are going to add this rock element into here. So the rock should be here. So to add that, we need to know the parent diff of this, the parent element. The parent element is game, and we already have game here. So const game diff document get element by by ID game. So we are going to add game here. So game diff dot append child rock. So what's this going to do is just add a new diff here that we have created. So it'll spawn a rock. 
So let's see if it works. So there we go, we have spawned a rock. So if you refresh again, we click and there you go, there's a rock. But the thing is, we only spawned one rock. So we should spawn other rocks too. So how do we do that? Well, that's not hard because we have already a helper function here called random range. We will be using random range here. Why? Because we are going to spawn new rocks uh, in random intervals. So we can utilize set timeout here. So, oh, not set timeout. And in the handler here, I'm just going to spawn this function. So it's going to create a loop. Spawn rock is going to call spawn rock, spawn rock, spawn rock, and so on and so forth. Until this condition is not true. Until this condition is true, I mean. So I'm going to set timeout. And for the timer, I'm going to do random. So the random interval that I'm going to use is it's it will spawn a rock between 800 milliseconds and 2 seconds so we can have a rock every 800 seconds or uh, between 800 seconds uh, 800 milliseconds and 2 seconds so if I click save and, and there we go we have a rock spawning period dot periodically randomly so you will notice here that the rock will be glitched here that's because we haven't deleted the rocks yet that have expired so we have to delete the rocks that have expired expired here meaning that the animation has done so if we see move rock here we follow it uh, the animation will only run for 10 seconds after that the game will be glitched so after 10 seconds we should delete the rock how well we can use set timeout again so here i'm going to do set timeout and i'm going to add a uh, arrow function here so anything that we place here will be run every interval that we set uh, for, for a delay that we set and in the delay, I'm going to set 10 seconds because that's what's written in Game Rock. So here we will delete the rock from this div. So if you, I press F12 in my browser and I go to Inspector, I go to here and I click Game. Uh, notice here. So I'm going to play the game and you will see that rocks will spawn in and we have to delete them. So how do we delete them once they have expired? That is very simple. So let me refresh, close this. And what we're going to do is we type game div, remove child and the child here that we remove if rock. That's it. So let's test. So as we can see here, everything is great and nice. So yeah. Uh, if 10 seconds have passed and the rocks hasn't glitched yet. But we haven't implemented one of the most important things. That is, if we hit the rocks, it will show a game over and the game will end. So let's do that next. But before that, we need to update the game end function. So we should set here that ended equals true. So it doesn't spawn any more rocks. And yeah, let's create the rock collision function next. So, so to do the rock collision function, we need to actually know where the rock is in the game so when the coordinates of the rock is near the cat and the cat hasn't jumped yet we should show a game over screen 
To do that, we need to know the positions of each rock. So how do we do that? Okay, so let's do the collision detection. So to do the collision detection, we need to know the position of each rock. And to know the position of each rock, it's really simple because we can do we can get the position of each rock from straight from HTML, which is great. So to do that, we need to know the position of each rock, right? So we need to get all the rocks from the diff of game. So how do we do that? Simple. We can do document dot query selector all and we are going to select game rock so what this will do is this will give us an array of every element every html element in this file that with the class dot game dash rock so it's gonna return an array right so we can do a for loop with it so here i'm going to type for and then here I'm going to type rock of document dot query selector all. So I will iterate over this and for of is going to return each element as its own object. So it's like Python in statement, for in statement. So we can use rock here as every value in query selector all game rock so here i'm going to store the position of each rock in a variable called rock pass and i'm going to insert rock dot off set left so why offset why offset left because i want to know the position of the rock from the left so for the next rock here the here one it's zero now so when the rock hits the left it will be zero and when the rock is on the right it will be the width of the browser window pretty simple why left because our cat is on the left and we want it to be simple so once we get the offset we are going to detect for any collisions so here's the code so if the cat is not jumping and the position of the rock is above zero so it's right here and the rock position is less than 256 i mean 128 why 128 because that is the exact length from the left into the right side of the cat so if the rock reaches the right side of the cat it reaches the left side of the cat and uh, the cat is not jumping then it will detect so that's that and here we are going to create we are going to run game end so when a collision is detected the game will end so we have to do this for loop every uh, as many as we want so we are going to put this in interval. Why? Because we have to check for this collision continuously. We cannot do it only one time. So I'm going to put this in set interval. So let's create an arrow function here and put this inside a bracket. And then here I'm going to call set interval. And here I'm going to set up the the interval so the interval i'm going to set is 50 milliseconds why 50 milliseconds that because that is close to 50 frames per second which is a good number so that's the rock collision then so how do we test we can print something into the console so console doc hit so let's test i'm going to play the game normally and then for the next rock i'm going to hit it bam 
See, in the terminal, it says hit. So, wonderful. Our code works. And we can continue with game end. So, here in game end, I'm going to clear this interval because we don't want to check any more collisions. So, I'm going to put this in set interval and collision checker. So, I already made that in the boilerplate. So collision checker, set interval, and I'm going to repeat this code, but I'm going to, to change it to collision checker. And the next one that we need to do in game end is actually display the game over screen, the game over div. So how do we do that? Simple. So let's create a new H1 here. We will we will type game over and it'll show and what we're going to do is what we're going to do is to center it so in the h1 here i'm going to type a text align center save and then there we go and then here we don't want this to be visible well, it is not game over, so I'm going to create a new class here, and we're just going to place gone, and it's gone. Very simple. And I'm going to have to create an ID here that is called game over. So the rationale is to make this visible, to delete the gone class from this when the game is over. So it's visible. So here I'm going to document get element by ID game over and here I'm going to type class lists and remove gone so it will appear when we have a game over so let's test our game so I'm going to hit a rock here and boom, game over. But as you can see, the cat is still running, the ground is still moving and there was still some rocks. So we need to clear that. So to do that, we are going to add gone to cat div. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to copy this too because we don't want the floor to move. And basically, I want to add gone and remove move left so the ground stops moving and the cat disappears. And one more thing that we have to do is we have to delete all the rocks that is visible on screen. To do that, I'm just going to copy this for statement and paste it here. And I'm going to delete the contents of it. And I'm going to just do this game diff dot remove child. And I'm going to remove every rock that is visible. So I'm going to run the game again. And there we go. We have the game complete. So what we're going to do now is to deploy our game to Firebase hosting so our friends can play it in the comfort of their own PC without having to download anything. So to do that, you have to create a new Firebase account in Google. So welcome to Firebase. Here, we can deploy your application, your web application here. And in Firebase, there are other features too, such as database and testing and deploying CICD and more advanced stuff here. So you can use the database here for free. So you can create, for example, a high score scoreboard for your game, a dev counter for every user, and you can basically be creative with it. So you have to create a new account here. So you can sign it with your Google account. And then after that, you are going to 
install Firebase CLI. So Firebase CLI allows you to access Firebase from your command line in VS Code. So after installing Firebase CLI, you should be able to access Firebase from your command line. So to access command line in command prompt in VS Code, what you want to do is go to terminal and click new terminal and it should appear. And to test whether you have installed Firebase CLI or not, you can just type Firebase dash dash help. And uh, if you have installed it, something should pop up in a second. There you go. So it works because it doesn't display any error. So next, what you want to do is to type Firebase login to login into your Google account. A window will appear and you will have to enter your password and your email. And after that, you are set and ready to deploy your application. So deploying an application is really simple. So what you want to type in the terminal is Firebase in it. So this will initialize a new Firebase project. So enter. And in the second, Firebase will appear. And are you ready to proceed? Of course. And you have to choose the what you want to do. So we don't want to do database. We don't want to do Firestore functions. We want to do hosting. So I'm going to press space to select that and I'm going to press enter. So this will appear. So first let's associate this project directory with a Firebase project. So select an option. We want to create a new project because we don't have a project yet. So we have to select a unique project ID. For now, I'm going to choose GDSC cat game this is very important because your website will depend entirely on this and then i'm going to click enter and then here uh, what you want to call your project just enter because it's the same as the previous one and it will create a project in google cloud this will take a while but it should finish soon so let's wait for that. And what do you want to use as your public directory? We are going to choose the current directory. So I'm going to type dot and then configure as a single page app. Yes, because we only have a single page. And set automatic builds, no. So overwrite, no, because we already have index HTML. So enter and everything is done. So if you see the directory, new files will appear. So we have Firebase RC, gitignore, JSON, and so on. If this files appears, it means that you have configured Firebase hosting successfully. And to deploy your Firebase web application to the web it's very simple just type this firebase deploy enter and then it will upload your files into the internet and that's it i'm serious that's all that you need to do so it finished uploading and here's your hosting url so just copy this into your browser and paste and okay it hasn't updated yet so let me refresh and so if you see something like this that's because something is wrong with the firebase itself maybe it hasn't fully updated the file in the server yet so don't panic if you see this uh, if you refresh and it still is not found that what you want to do is copy this project URL to your browser 
and so enter and then you will go to your project so you want to go to hosting and then wait and then you will have two URLs here so we tried the first one it doesn't work so we are going to try the second one so there we go we have our game uploaded to the internet and you can give the link to your friends and your friends can play it so that's it for uploading your games to the internet thank you guys for listening and have fun and have fun exploring what html css and javascript can do and firebase thank you